Hello and welcome to this episode of the Terror Express. In 1983, the horror world got what is known as the Holy Grail of horror movies, called The Mutilator. <laughs> On the heel of its 40th anniversary, we are finally getting a sequel, and we have the director of both films here, Buddy Cooper. Hello, Buddy. Thank you for joining us in this episode where we hope to get mutilated together. How are you? Hey, Jason. I'm well. Thank you. I hope you are. It's oh, very well. Very very excited to have you here. I have to say Mutilator has been and will always be one of my all-time favorite horror films of the 80s. And I do have one of my coveted possessions here is a pair of the screen-worn pants from Sue that I got from your I remember your when you got those. Yeah. Yes. Loved it. And I'm, I'm still holding out for a, a, a Bill Hitchcock shirt one of these days, maybe. But uh, <laughs> let's, let's jump in here. I want to start talking a little bit about The Mutilator Part 2. And if right. you can, can you share a little bit of what part two is about, a little bit of the synopsis, what were, what were you in for? Yeah, I don't want to say too much. I will say that it, uh, the idea is that there's a film within a film. Mm. And the film within the film, which is being made, is a remake of The Mutilator. Oh, nice. And so... Uh, it, the thing takes place during the last two days of shooting. There's a rap party and a bit of a horror fest that night. And that way, we are able to bring in some of the cast of the original Mutilator. Bill oh. Hitchcock and Ruth Martinez are there. Uh, I'll say Beautiful. that uh, Jack Chatham signed himself out to the, uh, he said he was aged out. He, he, he did show up for a day to watch the shooting. And so we had a cameo, we, we stuck him in front of the camera. That's, that's exciting to hear that. Um, sounds, sounds really wonderful. Um, now, we, let's talk a little bit about the newcomers to the, the, the Mutilator. Hopefully right. we'll become a franchise here. Uh, Damien Mefe and Terry Kaiser, um, horror fans will know them from films such as Strangers Pray at Night, Friday the 13th, part seven. Yeah. What do they bring to the Mutilator 2 and their characters, Jack Chatham, and nice nod, by the way, and Columbo? Uh, well, uh, some, one of my producers suggested Damien for the role, and Damien suggested Terry for hmm. the Jack Chatham character. They're friends, and they work well together. It was, it was good to see them working together. They're both very talented and skilled actors. They brought a lot to the project. First, Terry bears a certain resemblance to Jack Chatham, so it was good that, that he uh, was available and interested. And uh, he, he fit right in. He got the idea of his character and stuck to it through the whole thing. Damien was, was perfect as Columbo the cop. He nailed it. He nailed his character. He was properly aloof and standoffish and controlling, but at the same time, he was not offensive to the character. He was a good guy, just a cop, doing, being very businesslike, doing his job. And it was good to watch them work together. They're friends. It was good to watch them working together. They both brought a lot to it. Um, you also mentioned that Ruth Martinez and Bill Hitchcock were back on set. What was it like being reunited with Ruth and Bill? It was really good. Uh, we've all stayed in touch through the years. Mm. The, the cast members have stayed in touch with themselves more so than with me, but uh, I stayed in touch with them. Bill lives here in town, so I see him from time to time. Uh, yeah, that's cool. And their friend, Bill and Ruth are friends as as well as being friends with the other cast members. So it was fun for them to get back in and, and do yeah. it again. And they, they looked forward to it. Uh, Bill did double duty. Uh, he was also the prop master for the picture. And he had a couple of assistants and Ruth <laughs> became one of his assistants. So they worked together in front of the camera and behind the camera. And it was good. They got along great. Uh, uh, you know, it was, uh, it'll be good for fans of the Mutilator to see those two back. Oh in yeah, Mutilator too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be great to see them back together again. Um, can we get an idea of what to expect with the Mutilator two? How was the Mutilator two shot, and what will the like the color grade and the the mood be in comparison with the original Mutilator? Yeah, we uh, we strived to achieve the same look, the same feel, the same style we shot for that, the color, the sound, the effects. Um, it's made for the fans of The Mutilator and uh, we, we tried and I think we did a pretty good job of that. So look for the same sort of movie. 
Well, I will thank you in advance for that because that's some of the things I was hoping for. Uh, love that answer. Thank you. Can we expect practical effects, CGI, mm -hmm. or is it going to be kind of a marriage of the two? We, uh, we, the goal was to use exclusively practical effects. Uh, mm -hmm. There were some problems with some of the effects, and consequently, we've had to tweak them a little bit with a little CGI, but basically they're practical effects. Oh, very good. I, I'm a fan of practical effects myself. I've seen recent movies where the CGI has gotten so good though, that even the marriage of the two, sometimes you can't even tell they, they work so well together. Um, they've definitely come a long way with the CGI, but practical will always be my, uh, in my heart is my favorite. You, you mentioned some, some of the effects not quite working out and we had to kind of marry, marry it with CGI. Will the kills in the Mutilator 2 be as big and brutal and wonderfully uh, over the top uh, as they were uh, in the original? I, uh, I love your choice of words. You can't deny the fact that the Mutilator was definitely brutal. Uh, I remember the first time I saw it, my jaw dropped. I was 12 years old. I was in my aunt's house. We got to the part where um, the cop was under the steps and he got, got decapitated. My aunt shut it off and said, all right, you have to go to bed now. You have school tomorrow. I had to wait all night and all the next day to come back and finish the mutilator. So every time I watch it, I think of, I think of that as it holds a nice place in my heart, but the kills are definitely brutal. Yeah. That's what we're seeing from that particular uh, gag. If you're talking about in the mutilator, the, uh, the actor was um, Ben Moore, ben ben Moore. Moore uh, who was in uh, 2000 maniacs way back when. And mm -hmm. Ben was a local guy and he had looked friends and on the steps, that was at the steps of a condo. There's another condo right next door with a patio and steps. And he had invited all his friends, and there was a crowd of people on the other deck watching that event. And that they gave Ben a big round of applause. That was a, a, a fun <laughs> moment in the shooting of that movie. The whole movie was fun. We were aimed for the same degree of brutality, so to speak, but and we came close, let's say. <laughs> I to this day the 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 scene with Sue in the garage is always one of the scenes that I'll put on for any horror film lover who hasn't been acquainted with the mutilator. That is one of my favorite kills in any movie, and that's one of the ones that I always share with people. I'm like, all right, come watch this. You gotta watch this. And I watched, I believe it was a documentary about the mutilator where they were talking about how the audience didn't expect to see that full scene, and that they thought the camera was gonna cut away, and then they showed the hook going in and coming out that was that was um that was a great money shot moment if you will for the music yeah. the uh the cast the crew was a little bit anxious about shooting that scene and the boom operator who was the younger sister of peter schnall the dp said uh she wasn't gonna do it she walked off the set <laughs> he had to go get her and talk to her a little bit bring her back in so so she uh held the boom for that set for that shot <laughs> Now, do we know if there might be a trilogy? Is there a part three that may be already being discussed? Is that a possibility? No. Uh, of course, I'd love to do a part three, but we, there are no plans. And that would depend really on whether or not the New Letter 2 is successful. If it's well received and people, you know, if I make my money back, then yeah. I'd love to do another one because it's a. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but it's an expensive hobby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So if I don't make it back, I don't know. If I do make it back and some distributors are interested, yeah, I'm game. What's been your biggest challenge of filming the Mutilator 2? The, the biggest challenge, there really was no big challenge with the filming, uh, aside from the special effects. Occasionally there was a gag that didn't work. The biggest challenge in making the thing is, has been in the finishing. Uh, the editing was difficult. Robert Newton, the editor, did a, a masterful job of going through all the mini tapes and picking out the right ones, putting them mm -hmm. together in the right order. And so it's come a long way. He deserves a real pat on the back. That was the hardest part of it. Uh, as, as a filmmaker and director, what are your biggest rewards of, of that aspect of filmmaking? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it, look, sh I think shooting on the set it was most rewarding. It's most fun. It's most rewarding. The cast and crew were 
co- highly competent, easy to work with, understanding. They uh, deferred to me, showed me far more respect than I really felt entitled to. They were just a great bunch. Shooting the movie is, is the thing, that's, yeah. That's great. And I love, I love when you have a crew and cast like that because it really shows on screen the chemistry is, is undeniable. There's a lot of on screen on screen chemistry, and mm, good. Two of the characters, Sandy played by Cody Cameron, and McNutt played by Cheney Morrow, had never worked together before. They never, I think they had never seen each other before, and you would swear that they had spent their lives together. They just really worked well together. They did, and that. as did everybody else. But they did, they were really a standout true, true uh, pair. I love that. I want to ask you what's going to happen to the characters, but I'm not because I don't want any spoilers. It has to be, it's better when it's shocking when you don't know what's coming. Give it, well, give the I'll give you a clue. Okay. Not everybody does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. <laughs> what, what, what do you think or hope that the audience is going to take away from the mutilator too? The biggest thing they'll take away uh, from it. Yeah. I, I think that they will, appreciate it, not be astounded by the quality of the acting, the talent in this thing. I was fortunate to get the people to play the roles that I got. And I don't, it was, it, it, they are, they all are extremely talented, highly skilled, and they were prepared. They came to the mm. set, they knew their characters and they, the characters came alive and often the character would say or do something that was not in the script, but was appropriate for the character to say or do at that time. And oftentimes it was better than what was written on the page. You know, I just stood back and watched them go. It was, uh, they were impressive, every one of them. And I think that the audience will remember some of these actors and look for them in future movies because they're going to, they go in places, all of them. What would you say is the biggest influence that the original Mutilator has made in the horror world as far as filmmaking goes? Uh, I suppose that if it had an influence, it cracked the door open a little bit for on-screen gore uh, mm-hmm. and on and on camera effects. You know, up until yeah. then, somebody would look at what you'd look away and somebody would swing a knife and then you'd look back and the knife would be sticking in somebody's chest, that sort of thing. And we tried to do all that on camera. And I think there's more of that now than there was before. I don't take credit for it, but that's what we tried to do. I, I, I do I do consider The Mutilator to be one of those films that woke up the MPAA and said, oh, we better start paying a little bit more attention here because that, that was really, really gory. <laughs> so that, that's one of the things that I've always considered The Mutilator to be. Um, not responsible well, uh, for, but but part of. It, yeah, it well, it was made for the gore fans. Yes, and I at, definitely received as as a gift. At the time, I read in Wicked Variety that a third of the tickets being sold were being sold for horror movies, low budget horror movies. So I thought I'd have a pretty good chance to get my money back when I made that one. Now, that was a mistake. Yeah. That was an error <laughs> in judgment. But but anyhow, the uh, MPAA really didn't like it. And we had to take out the good parts to, to get an R rating. And after that, it wasn't as good. The, uh, it didn't occur to me until years later that the MPAA may have had its eye on ticket sales also. And they didn't want low budget horror movies getting their share of the ticket sales. They wanted to hold us down to a minimum. So there might have been something like that at play. When you were making the mutilator did you even suspect that 30 40 years later there would be such a cult following of this film no <laughs> how does that make you feel knowing that you you've created such a cult following of the mutilator i uh, i like it <laughs> what can i say <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think that it had it did develop a following even when it was hard to find it was uh, the old vestron video mm-hmm. uh, vhs they yes. put out a laser disc also. Not everybody's aware of that. There were, I think they sold three copies. I got one. Ryan James, who plays <laughs> scene in, in the movie, who did an excellent job. 
uh, got one. I don't know who bought the third one. Maybe my mother. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> but, I will say I'm a. I'm a proud owner still to this day of the VHS uncut version of the mutilator. It's still, it's still within my, my collection and always will be. Arrow video brought it out on the Blu-ray CD. The guy named Ewan, I was talking with Shout Factory and a guy named Ewan Kent from Arrow called and we hit it off and went from there. He flew over, picked up a cameraman in New York City and came down and supervised actually conducted some of the interviews and, and supervised nice. a lot of the stuff that was involved in that package. And that package that Arrow brought out was something for the old fans to get, make it better. But it also introduced the movie to a whole crop of new fans. And, and that had a yeah. lot to do with it. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually own that, that Blu-ray release and it is beautiful. I remember I pre-ordered it and it got pushed back and it got pushed back. And the weight was intense, but when I finally got it, it was such a beautiful package, so so well made, and and the special features in it are amazing. And uh, to the little to the listeners right now, that Blu-ray package of the Mutilator is available on Amazon. You can get it from Arrow Video on their website too, ArrowFilms.com. Oh, yeah. ArrowFilms.com. I think I actually pre-ordered mine on Best Buy when it first came out. I don't know if they may they may still have it there too. Um, but speaking of the Blu-ray release of the original, do we have any dates? Um, you said um, editing may finish next week. Do we have any dates set possibly for the release and a distribution company or the platform, streaming platforms where we can see the movie? I am searching for distribution at this time. Two distributors, Arrow Films and uh, Media Ventures, have expressed an interest in it and they nice. want to see it when it's finished. So that'll be happening soon. And I have a list of other distributors that I'm going to be contacting soon. So nice. to answer your question, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, soon, sometime, somewhere, somehow. Soon. Yeah. Soon. It's I'm coming. hoping, I'm hoping to get at least a small theatrical release and then yeah, I'll, I'll be there and then it'll go on <laughs> streaming, I suppose, but all of that will be worked out with the distributor. I don't have one at this time. Do you believe in the supernatural? Have you ever had a supernatural experience? That's an unusual question, but I will tell you a story. Okay. Uh, my father was uh, in, really into Christmas. His business was seasonal. He didn't have much to do in the winter. He threw himself into Christmas. He, was, he wasn't over the top, but he was at the top. And one year, one of my sisters gave him a wall clock sort of like a cuckoo clock, except it was a Santa Claus head. And on the hour, the Santa Claus mouth would move and it would say, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Well, it was hanging on the wall for a few years and the batteries died. He was in his 80s and didn't replace the batteries. And he he died. Uh, The batteries and this clock had been out two or three years. When the undertaker and had never... Of course, it had never made any more movements or sounds. But when the undertakers came and got him, put him on the gurney and wheeled him out, they wheeled him through the kitchen to the back door. This clock was hung on the wall over the door to the kitchen. And as they wheeled my father's dead body under that clock, it came to life. The mouth moved and it said, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. After not saying anything for years. Um, that, that was spooky. Oh yeah, I love I love stories like that. I'm, I'm all about the supernatural, and that's why I like to ask my guests their supernatural experiences. And I love stories like that. That that's the type of story that has me wanting to do this podcast and and talk to to people to hear things like that. That's that's fantastic. Okay. Um, I have I five questions for you here. First one is: If your house were on fire. And everybody living and all the animals were out and safe, and you had time to save one item. What one item would you save? I happen to have sitting right over there the original negatives of the mutilator oh. wrapped up in plastic. I might try to struggle in it. <laughs> you know, I might try to get that out. If you were in a zombie apocalypse, what would your weapon of choice be? 
I don't know, canned dog food. I don't know. <laughs> my big brains. I don't know. Here, eat some of this. Leave me alone. Feed, feed, feed them that instead of brains. It's just as mushy. Why not? Uh, if you could have dinner with one person who's passed away, the ghost of one person who's passed away, who would who would you have dinner with? Uh, my father, I think. If if you were to have dinner with your father's spirit, what would you just out of curiosity? What would you have as a meal? As a meal? Yeah. Well, he would probably have uh, pig brains and scrambled eggs with a little melted cheese on the side. I would have either uh, a good salad or maybe a steak, a small one. That sounds good to me. The closing question that I would like to ask you is what will be your legacy? My legacy, I know what my legacy will be. It's touching. My legacy would be my children. Hmm. I have uh, I have two wonderful adult children. They are fine people. My daughter is a professionally trained chef, had her own restaurant. She and her husband run it, and she was on. It was on uh, Triple D last month or September, the last of sept- end of September. You know that dinner drive-ins and dives show it was on there. Yeah, what's the name of the restaurant? You can do a little plug if you like. Yeah. Amos Mosquitoes Restaurant and Bar in Atlantic Beach, right across the street from No Chanamoto, where we shot both movies. Uh, my son is uh, a fine man. He's also a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. He's also a lawyer. Uh, he uh, loves music. He was in, he worked for a couple of labels in, uh, on the West Coast for a while, while he, before he got into law school. And he currently is the mayor of the town of Atlantic Beach where we live. He's been mayor for eight, eight years or so now. They both nice. have great, great senses of humor. They're wonderful people, well-rounded, honest, outgoing. Everybody likes them. And I'm uh, proud of them. <laughs> it's hard, hard not to say that. Right? I'm getting all teary out of here. Yeah, no, I understand the bond between the father and the kids. My daughter is a, um, a beautiful soul, and she's my first grandchild is on the way. So the bond is is, is a beautiful, that. magical thing. Yeah, I got two two little girls. Unless, so not so little, 13 and 15. Yeah, I'm sorry, what are the ages? I have two granddaughters, 13 and oh. 15. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're great. They're great. Yeah, everyone's, everyone says it's magical being a grandparent. So I'm looking forward to it. We're going to be a, yeah. I'll be a spring grandfather. It's, uh, yeah, you're, yeah, you're gonna love it. Yeah, I look forward to it. And I, I guess unless you're a big Ed, maybe then the parental bond isn't. So good. <laughs> <laughs> but is there anything else you'd like to promote or share um, to, for for the fans of the Mutilator um, before we go? Any yeah. any projects coming up? I'll I'll trim it down so you won't get the okay. whole blast. But mutilated uns- a little bit. An unscrupulous dental assistant takes teeth from children and doesn't, he keeps them so they can't put them under their pillow. The tooth fairy finds out and boy, is he pissed. It sounds like a nice dark fairy tale for grownups. Buddy, I, I thank you so much for coming on Terror Express. This has been a real treat for me. I know the listeners are really appreciative uh, as well um, for having you here. Jason, it's been a real pleasure for me to be here and talk with you. Thank you. Thank if you. I, I if I come it. across an old Bill Hitchcock shirt somewhere, I'll send it to you. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Let me know. That'd be great. Okay. <laughs>